Hello, everybody, and welcome. Start off, I want to talk about uh, what might be becoming the elephant in the room. So let's do this. So as soon as you become any sort of public figure, which is what happens when you go on the internet in almost any capacity, and you express your opinions or beliefs, what follows is a bunch of people trying to shut you up by name-calling you. That isn't right, but it is to be expected. Now, as somebody who expresses myself through this channel, I knew that was coming. But for those of you who will actually listen, and I expect that is a very low percentage, unfortunately, I would like to clearly and emphatically state a couple of things to clear the air for those of you still in doubt. First of all, when it comes to what society expects or demands that I believe, I don't give a damn. Having your beliefs shaped by the social majority, especially in the internet and social media age, is a really great way to remain very, very ignorant about a whole damn lot of things. I make up my own mind. I research my own facts. I give my own opinions. And you can like it, or you can lump it. I don't care. Second of all, if some of you continue to believe that finger-pointing and name-calling will cause me to either change my opinion, or will shut down my opinion altogether, you are sadly mistaken. You could go see my first point, I don't give a damn. And I don't care. You, you are entitled to your own differing opinions. It's called freedom of speech and freedom of thought. Enjoy it while you still have it. And of course, enjoy the hypocrisy of labeling me something untrue, while at the same time you call me old and white and male, showing that your own biases are the ones that run deep. Your own biases, not mine. Lastly, those who think they are being smug and superior by calling me a phobe and a hater. You only show your own ignorance of whom I am. To sit there and think that I am hating on those of the LGBTQ plus community in any way, shape, or form is to not understand the words that I am speaking. Nowhere do I express hatred for any of these people, many of whom I work with on a daily basis and get along with quite well. Hello. Hi there. My name is Dredd. I work in the gaming industry. No, not the video game industry, but the gaming industry. Again, I work with people like this on a daily basis, and I get along with them quite fabulously well. All I am doing on this channel is talking about entertainment. Can we say it together? Entertainment. It's not a hard concept, people. In doing so, I express my fervent opinion, which is that hiring people who are agenda-driven whether it be in the LGBTQRSTUE, whatever the rest of the letters are, community, or from elsewhere, will and does result in inferior products almost all the time. Due to a focus on things that are not related to the game, the TV show, or the movie. Hey, if you are a member of the LGBTQ plus community, and you desire a game or a movie that relates to your sexuality and sexual preference, that's totally fine. Go for it. However, in my opinion, it's not fine when somebody takes over an existing franchise and turns it on its ear, ruining characters and stories that people are already invested in, in order to try to change society. You want your own entertainment with a focus on things that you find important. Cool. 
you can have it. Just create it from scratch and market it for others who think the same way you do. Simple. If you have to take over a popular existing franchise in order to try to get the sales that you need, you probably just need to make a better product to begin with. That is my opinion on that. And please note, please note this. I am talking here about hiring people who are agenda driven. I am not, I am not talking about hiring a gay person or a bi person or a trans person. These people are all just people. We're all fucking human beings. We should be able to get along. I don't have an issue with gay people, bi people, or trans people. What I do have an issue with is people who are entirely driven by an agenda and a need to change society. If you can't understand this distinction, you and I will never be able to get along because you are just being willfully ignorant. Yeah. One last thing uh, on those who wish to believe in my hatred for others. You don't know me. I am not about to spill all my personal life details online, because that's not a really start thing to do, is it? Uh, nor the specific details of my close family members. But trust me, thinking I am some sort of phobe could not be further from the truth. Unfortunately for far too many of you out there, the truth is not just very convenient. So you ignore it. So be it. Ignorance breeds ignorance, and the dance goes on. And now, on to the meat and the potatoes of this video. Thank you all for your time. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Miss Valley Entertainment News. My name is Dread. We're going to take another look and do some reaction to a couple of videos on Star Wars Outlaws. Now, I want to say right off the bat, if you're excited for Star Wars Outlaws, that's fine. If you're looking forward to buying this game from Ubisoft when it launches, that's fine. That's not an issue. Um, this kind of video is for those of you who might want some news that you might not be getting about Star Wars Outlaws, or for those of you who just want to be informed about issues. Um, this may help some of you to decide, and eh, maybe I'll wait till the game comes out before I decide. That kind of thing. Uh, these videos are intended to help you and make an informed decision as a consumer. So we're going to be reacting to two videos, one by Dr. Disaster called Star Wars Outlaws, an overpriced Ubisoft disappointment which the company can't afford, and also a video by Jor Raptor called We Need to Talk About the New Star Wars Outlaws Gameplay. So we're going to get into uh, the gameplay and the overpriced uh, aspects of this. Let's do this. Starting with this one right here, and we will be linking both these original videos down below in the description. Here we go. What's up, Space Pirates? This is your captain, the effortlessly effervescent Dr. Disaster, and I think it's time to bust out the three words that are the most fun to say in the English language. Oh, what a loser! Close, but that wasn't <laughs> quite what I was going for here. I told you! Yep. I told you. There it is, the old I told you. Because despite all the media doing their damnedest to protect their corporate masters at Disney and Ubisoft, valid criticism continues to trickle out on this. So, just pointing out as he talks, this bit is a title here in the background. Relatively small compared to Starfield, quote, all right? Star Wars Outlaws is already disappointing fans as new information points to a smaller Ubisoft experience. Star Wars Outlaws game. You know which one I'm talking about. The one featuring the character who looks like the love child of Rosie O'Donnell and Swamp Thing. What are you? Very ugly. Okay, we, we, don't, we don't need the music off of his dancing skit. Because, uh, you know, YouTube. 
Alright me hearties, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter I like where it. I keep a list of games like Star Wars Outlaws, games that are lousy with woke and DEI crap pinned to my account at all times. My handle over there is Dr. Disaster One. Anyhow, it has been evident for the past few months, ever since they started releasing information about this game, that Star Wars Outlaws was going to be a mess. The first clue was obviously the fact that it was being produced by Ubisoft. That company is poison for games these days. This is very, very true. Research the history of Ubisoft. You will find very many scandals and very angry... Um, Fans and consumers with Ubisoft, uh, you may be a young person or someone new into gaming who does not know about their background. It, it's probably a good idea before you purchase their products to get them for it. My, how the mighty have fallen. But beyond that, it was clear that this game would suck the second that we saw that they were taking a character model that looked like this, and they made the actual character look like this. Yeah! Uh -huh. Yeah. Last month, Why? we learned more about the gameplay. Several reviewers said... Because it seems like it's a thing nowadays where women in gaming can't be beautiful. They have to look like dudes. It, it, as I said, it seems to be a thing. Don't, 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 don't come at me and say, no, it's not a thing. It's not... It seems, it appears to a great many people to be a thing. Or your own conclusions. Said the combat was too easy, and now we have got another complaint. One of the big selling points for the game was how massive the worlds were for players to explore. But now we are learning that the game is, quote, relatively small compared to Starfield. Star Wars Outlaws is already disappointing fans as new information points to a smaller Ubisoft experience. Now you're going to say, but Dread... Starfield, although a terrible game for the most part, uh, featured numerous swirls you could go land on and explore. Uh, of course, Ubisoft has already said that Star Wars Outlaws is going to focus on, I believe, five planets. So you're going to be like, Dread, of course, five planets and all the many planets in Starfield. One's much bigger than the other. That's not what this quote is about. This quote is about the space on the planet that you can explore. So if you recall playing Starfield, if you're a Starfield player or hearing about this, player lands on Starfield planet, goes and does some exploring, runs across the face of the planet, rocks and dirt, hits an invisible wall. It's a really relatively small area. It's not the entire planet. The area map on each of the Star, the, uh, Star Wars uh, Outlaws planets is smaller than the maps of the planets on Starfield. That's what's being pointed out here. Let's be clear about that. Experience. This article comes to us from Fandom Wire. It says, Star Wars Outlaws is close to its release, and although the gameplay reveals have received mixed reception so far, basically it's been a mixture of people giving it blind praise just because it's a Disney product, and then a handful of people actually talking about the gameplay and pointing out that it's too easy and terrible. Well, anyway, fans have decent expectations for the game. Do they, though? Have you seen the ratio on the trailers for this game? Yeah. However, one detail about the game that was unveiled recently has left fans scratching their heads. The upcoming game, which has been confirmed to have five planets, will be smaller than players might think. To be precise, players will be able to cross three planets out of the five in just under five minutes on a speeder, which is very small when compared to the planets available in Starfield. So, three of the planets, three out of the five, that you're going to be able to actually land on and explore. Three of those five. You'll be able to hop on a speeder and cross the entire planet or the entire available area to you to explore on the planet in under five minutes. Now, again, that is a, on a speeder. How fast does a speeder go? How much, you know? mileage does it eat up 
per second or minute or whatever. I, I don't know. But as it says, this is small when compared to the planets available in Starfield. So three of the five planets that you can explore here, and there's only five planets you can explore in the game, at least at this point, please remember, you have to buy a season pass for the game. I've talked about this in a great many older videos on this. It's right on the fucking website, so do not tell me a liar. Season pass. If you are aware of the history of Ubisoft and season passes, you know that they continually rip off the players using season passes. So be aware of that. To me, a season pass means there's going to be added content, seasons, and you're going to have to either pay for each season or continually up the price of your season pass. So be aware, this is a game that at least appears will be asking you for more money to continue playing it. Just be aware of that. All right? Now, three of these five planets, and again, only five planets you can visit, three of them are small in size, smaller than the planets you can explore in Starfield. Let that sink in for a while, and understand this game is a lot smaller in scope than people thought it was going to be. Whoop de doo! Yeah, whoop de doo indeed. That is pretty damn small the for a know game this, that costs over a hundred dollars. If you want to play the whole thing, that is ridiculous. But it is important information for you as a consumer to know. Does that affect the length of the game? I don't know. I mean, uh, a planet you can cross on a speeder bike in five minutes could still have three hundred quests in it. I don't know. Neither do you. None of us will apparently know until the game comes out. But size-wise of what you can explore, it is much smaller than people were anticipating. Again, information that you as a consumer need to know. Tiny. A game like Skyrim that came out almost a decade and a half ago, that is much larger than what we're talking about here. The old Fallout titles are much bigger. Hell, the old school Assassin's Creed games from Ubisoft themselves were bigger than this. It sounds to me like these guys put together a lazy, shoddy product. And after some coping from the writer, trying to convince people don't know. that maybe it's a good thing that the world is small in this game. Game because somehow exploration gets tedious, even though that is one of the main selling points no, of doesn't. open worlds. But somehow that's going to be a good thing that you don't have to. Exploration is only tedious in games like Starfield where there's actually nothing to explore. Rocks and dirt, right? Or open empty space or, or whatever. That it becomes tedious, but if you fill it full of interesting things, it's not tedious explore very much. But anyhow, after that cope, they acknowledge that Ubisoft has been struggling lately. Down at the bottom there, it says Ubisoft has been having a rough period for the past couple of years. The industry giants have dominated the gaming scene for a long period, but recent flops from them have turned the tide for the worse. Last year alone, the company faced a staggering loss of half a million euros. We're going to pause real quick. That's a typo, I'm assuming. It wasn't half a million. It was half a billion with oh, a B. Yeah, They that's, lost that's damn near half a billion euros last year. Wow. And I expect it to be a shit year for them again in 2024 as well. But anyhow, the article says this ultimately led to the layoffs of many employees. Furthermore, the initial response to Star Wars Outlaws gameplay has not convinced many fans, Interesting. adding salt to the wound. Interesting. Fans feel the game looks very one-dimensional and follows a linear path similar to other Ubisoft games. Many have also compared the game to recent Far Cry games, and there is no quality that makes Star Wars Outlaws a standout. Regardless, yep. the pressure will be on the game to perform as another failure for Ubisoft will only make matters worse. Let me just state right here, I would love for this game to be a massive success and be the most fun game to come out this year. 
Um, I am a Star Wars fan going back to the original Star Wars before it was called Star Wars A New Hope. It just called Star Wars. Um, I love what George Lucas created. Uh, I, I love the expansion that many authors and people offered on this, uh, this universe that George created. I would love for this game to be great. A truly great game. I'm very skeptical of that. And I'm certainly not purchasing this game. First of all, the price the price point is just outside of my ability to purchase it. It's not happening. I can't dish out a hundred bucks. If I dish out a hundred bucks or more for a game, which I'm in Canada, it's gonna be more than a hundred. If I dish out a hundred dollars or more for a game, that means I might have to go a couple of days without eating. Let's be honest. All of my extra money does not go into a savings account. It does not go into an RSP. It does not go into my retirement fund. It goes into my food and grocery bill. That is the reality of many people in North America, if not in other places as well, I know right now. It's not good. Financially, many, many people in this world are in a bad, bad state. And I am counting myself as one of them. And some of you watching this will probably cheer and insult me and say that you hope I starve to death because goodness knows on the internet, not a lot of people are compassionate or care about anybody but themselves. Uh, regardless, um, I'm just saying I can't afford that kind of price point for a game. I would never purchase it until it came into a massive sale. But also I will be watching very carefully once the game comes out to see who plays it, who showcases it, who talks about it. What can we discover about the game? How can I see the gameplay? Am I, is it looking interesting? How does it play? How does it play on different consoles? How does it play on PC? All these different things are going to go into my deciding whether or not I will choose to make a future on-sale purchase of this game at some point. But right now, I'm thinking it's probably not going to happen because it doesn't seem like anything special. And to shill out a lot of money for a game, it needs to be special nowadays. That's my thought on that. Let's uh, let's watch the end of this here. Worse? How could they get any worse? Take a look around you, Ellen. We're at the threshold of hell! I mean, it almost can't get much worse for Ubisoft at this point. If they don't get it right with this game and with Assassin's Creed Shadows this year, they could very well be looking at a buyout from the likes of Microsoft or someone like them. But I'm going to leave it there. What, uh, what I will say about it is this. If a gaming company cannot put out good enough product or sell good enough product to the consumers... Um, I'm not one of those that goes, oh, oh no, people are losing their jobs over this. Oh no, this is terrible. Oh no. Oh no, the industry. Oh no. Um, because the reality is if you make crap games or games that are just not good enough or not interestingly enough or not interesting enough or whatever, like any other market out there, uh, like any other product, the, the market will, will be, you know, We'll run that. Like, like if you don't sell enough, something has to happen. Now, does the economy factor into that? Yes. Does the price point factor into that? Yes. Also, though, the gameplay, uh, the quality, the length, character, story, action, uh, the, you know, how, how the fighting goes, you know, um, how things are marketed. All of that plays into this. And as consumers, I'm just saying, you don't have to uh, be on board with anything that I'm saying or Dr. Disaster here is saying. All I'm saying is, uh, as a consumer, choose what to spend your money on wisely. Now, let's take a look over here at our second video by Jor Raptor called We Need to Talk About the New Star Wars Outlaws Gameplay. Again, this is uh, all linked down below if you want to watch the original video yourself. Let's talk about that new gameplay for Star Wars Outlaws because it definitely did not get the response I think Ubisoft was hoping for. So I want to go over why, how big the potential problems are and I also have a lot of exclusive info from an interview we did at Summer Game Fest. So let's start with what this new IGN gameplay is all about as it shows an expert mission which I think are a really great concept in Outlaws. In case you don't know, the game doesn't have a traditional skill tree but instead you can chase down leads to find criminal experts. Once you've found one, 
one, you can go on quests for them and in return, they will learn you new skills or grant you new equipment. In this specific case, we are working with a Jawa crew bull. Or it kind of reminds me of the Mandalorian season one, I believe, when, you know, he did some jobs and then he was able to get paid out in the currency he needed, which he was able to smelt the currency literally into new armor and stuff for himself. So you do the job for the person, to get paid, and then you upgrade yourself with that paid, literally in that case. Um, I'm not saying that the Ubisoft has stolen from the Mandalorian, I'm just saying that just reminds me of that. ...on Tatooine, who has promised to install a turret on our ship if we retrieve a Sarlacc tooth for him. Luckily for Kay, there's a dead Sarlacc somewhere close by that we can go and pluck the tooth from, so she hops Andy. on a speeder bike and heads into the desert. <clears throat> now, in case it wasn't clear from the intro, the reason why I wanted to talk about the gameplay is because I think it left a lot of people underwhelmed, and I believe one of the reasons why shows in this segment. When I think Star Wars open world, I don't picture myself riding in a straight line across a largely empty location looking desert. Sure, I get that Tatooine is very Abbas. nostalgic, but I'd argue it's not the most interesting looking location in the Star Wars universe. True. It's also one of the bigger planets you'll be visiting in Outlaws, and with an open world, that naturally leads to more empty spaces on- Oh, so as we've learned, three of the planets are very small as far as what we can uh, do on them. This is one of the two larger planets, and it's mainly going to be rocks and dirt. Sand and rocks, if you prefer. Uh, that's a little underwhelming again. My opinion, yours may differ, but hey, whatever. On the map as well. Meanwhile, earlier trailers show bustling cities, sprawling steps, jungles. So again, I'd like to know why pick Tatooine? Even the final bit of gameplay in yeah. space looks rather empty, while we know there are some cool looking locations and encounters that we've seen in earlier footage. So I think there are much more interesting locations in the game. It's so that part looked cool. All right, this part all looked cool, but this part did not. This looked like like very video gamey, like like going to the arcade and playing a video game. Beep, 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 right, that looks like that. Doesn't look that great. I mean, it, it looks fine, but not very great. This footage looked a lot better. Encounters that we've seen in earlier footage. So I think there are there. much more interesting locations in the game. It's just unfortunate that they did not pick those for this new showcase. I do want to go back a bit to Kay's speeder though, because I think it looks like a lot of fun to control. It moves pretty quick, quick, and we know from massive studio tour footage that you can also do quick drifts and make some pretty massive jumps. And oh. I think this footage kind of proves my earlier point, because looking at this makes me much more excited to explore the open world than, well, sand. I don't like sand. That's anyway, true. Another yep. cool thing we learned from an interview IGN did with the devs is that you can actually park the speeder on your ship, the Trailblazer. So if you need to make a rapid escape off a Makes planet, sense. you can pretty seamlessly transition from your bike to your ship. Let's get back to the new gameplay as Kay makes it to the Sarlacc and jumps right in. The concept of this is really cool as you're crawling through the insides of this big creature looking for a specific material, but it ends up looking and feeling mostly like a regular cave. And the fact that Kay's yeah. flashlight gives everything this blue you does doesn't really help it stand out either. The gameplay doesn't do much to change things up here as you're mostly sliding down slopes. I don't like the lighting. I don't know if that's from the flashlight itself, I guess, but I, I don't like that kind of lighting. That looks really, really weird. Kind of makes the shadows almost obsolete instead of should be oppressive dark shadows in a cavern or in a creature, whatever, whichever it may be. Um, it just looks weird. It's like there's volumetric mist all through it. Maybe, maybe on PC that's something you can turn off? I don't, I don't know. Leaping across gaps with your grappling hook, but oh. there's little to no interaction with your Hate environment or a Hate puzzle em. or something to change up the pace. Hate and them. I feel like a bit of a broken record here, but we've already seen more interesting stuff. Infiltrating Imperial bases and- Everybody's done a grappling hook. There's nothing exciting about it anymore. I just hate them. Like, do, do something different. That's just my opinion again. But I've done the grappling hook in a billion other games. And I got bored with it really, really quickly. It's damn near impossible nowadays for someone to do the grappling hook and do it really cool. And you're like, wow! Because it's all the same. It's just the same feature. Let's pluck this, this, and this out of the other games. Throw them into our game. 
call it Star Wars. You know, I'm saying there's there's a not a there's not as much Star Warsy feeling about this as there just is game, just game game feeling. That's my opinion. And using lockpicks and hacking to disable the alarm systems or the added tension of sneaking into a bike base because getting spotted lowers your reputation. And then the only obstacle we do meet here are some rocks that require the charge shot module from the blaster to blow up. But other than that, the quest doesn't seem like much more than a fetch quest up to this point. But yeah, we of course have to talk about that uh -huh. one moment. If you already watched the gameplay, you'll likely know what I mean. And by the way, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video so far and subscribe to not miss our next Outlaws video. Video. Okay, so here's what happens after K makes it out of the Sarlacc pit. I think this short clip is what has gotten the most response and it's easy to see why. The explosion effects don't look great, but I'm more jarred by the fact that it blows K far away, but is completely unable to leave a scratch on the rock wall behind her. And unlike the other things we've talked about so far, I can't really think of a good reason or excuse. The textures were all fluttering, or fluttering on her earlier as she got up too. I don't know if you noticed that. It's a, it's a fine clip. It doesn't look like something that should be in a game in 2024, though. It looks like some more work should have gone into it. Here. In fact, I've noticed a bit of a trend when looking at the rest of the gameplay. Later on, when Kay goes to retrieve the Sarlacc tooth from the pirates who stole it, she triggers some explosive barrels as well. And in this example, the enemy is not alerted by an explosion that literally happens right behind him. Sure, he goes into a search mode, but I think something blowing up wow. behind you would be enough to ring the alarms or Doesn't something. Turn towards then later, it. when dropping an explosive barrel, Kay is able to take out an enemy who is outside the visual range of the explosion. Huh. So even from a gameplay perspective, they appear to be a bit confusing. Uh, designed to make it easy for the player to to do whatever. This is probably, um, unless this has a, a difficulty setting on the game, it's probably not a game that people who enjoy games with difficulty will enjoy. Now that's fine. I, I enjoy a lot of games that aren't difficult. In fact, I tend to not like really difficult games, but um, I'm just letting you, again, consumer information. Giving you the info you need before you make a decision as a consumer. And the fact that there seems to be little to no destructibility doesn't do the game any favors either. The only thing I think you can break are those rocks I mentioned earlier, but if I'm being honest, the animation here doesn't look great either. Now, no, honestly, it might just it. be a limitation on the engine side, as Massive is using Snowdrop for their game development. To compare, the upgraded Anvil engine powering AC Shadows is able to do environmental destruction really well. Although, <laughs> to be fair, that is one of the main selling points of the engine overhaul. Also good to note is that this footage is of course running on an older build and with the game already having gone gold there's a lot of time to put some extra fixes in a sure. day one patch that won't solve the lack of destructible environments but at the no, very least it might fix the specific cutscene especially with how vocal people have been about it that i don't want to fix terrible it too this part just it looks freaking terrible Sorry, I'm just might fix watch the when the thing comes towards her look at her legs look at the hold you look how she it. runs she runs for two steps, maybe, and it blows up, launching her into the air, but she's not hurt. There's a big fiery explosion and a lot of cloud. There's like you could you could see it over on, on, on way over on the left hand edge of the screen. There's a couple three little pieces of rock flying off. There's a lot of flame and a lot of smoke. And despite the fact that she only ran two steps away from the explosive. She's completely unhurt and launched like off a springboard. I, I have a question for you. Do you think that some game designers out there think we're stupid? Why did they show this as gameplay footage and release this? When it's clearly, it's going to get broken down frame by frame, and it's clearly inferior looking. And very, very easy to pick apart. So so why do they do that? Like, what is the reasoning here? I'm, I'm asking you, because I don't know. Why, as Ubisoft, would you release this to the public? 
knowing that in 2024, this is not good gameplay. This is not good visuals at all. If this was 2018, this would be fine, probably. But it's 2024. Am I being too picky? Are all of us who are looking at this being too picky? Maybe it's just one part of the game, and maybe it happens so fast, and everything else is so fabulous that you don't even notice. That's entirely possible. But again, I'm saying, knowing this is going to get broken down second by second and looked at by people, why did they release this? What do they either make this scene better or wait and don't show the scene that's kind of shitty looking until you have made it better? Like, I don't know the answer, people. I don't know. I'm asking the question. Feel free to discuss below because I'm curious to fixate on the negatives for too long either because there's also some interesting new info regarding the syndicate. I spotted that when Kay hovers over the enemies outside of the Sarlacc pit with her binoculars, they're noted as belonging to the pirate faction. When she later escalates into combat with them, I also do not spot any reputation loss from doing so. So yeah, you'll be able to come across enemies that don't fall under the four major syndicates and going guns blazing yep. against these does not have any negative consequences. The Empire also falls under this category, although they do of course have the wanted system that causes them to send more troops after you and while yeah. they are a criminal Makes syndicate sense. you won't be able to improve your reputation with Zarek Bash either. These are the guys with the very recognizable helmets that we've seen in some of the trailers well, and they're led by this guy called Slero. And considering they're the ones that put a price on Kay's head in the first place it makes sense that you can't get a good reputation with them. So that leaves the Crimson Dawn, Pike Syndicate, Huts, and the Ashiga clan as the four factions you are trying to keep a strong reputation with. While each of them have a okay. home planet, like Tatooine for the Huts or Kijimi for the Ashiga, they are not confined to it, so you can come across them in other corners of the galaxy too. That means you'll have various opportunities to prove your worth to them, one of which is by accepting contracts for a... So it does say down here, uh, work in progress does not represent final quality game capture and cinematics. So take that into account too. Let's be fair. I can read that on the screen. We'll take that into account. I still don't know why, though, when one of those things is clearly <clears throat> clearly not showing your game off in the best light, why you would even release it. Why show off that nothing in the game is destructible except a few things? Why show off that your explosions look bad? That your explosions kill an enemy who's outside of the blast zone, but don't kill your hero or even hurt your hero who's inside the blast zone? Why would you show that off? If I'm a gaming company, I'm like, hell no, do not put that out. No. Fix it or hide it. One of the two. Opportunities to prove your worth to them, one of which is by accepting contracts for a specific faction to increase your reputation with them. You can hold up the three at a time and they range from infiltrating imperial bases to objectives in space, so it sounds like there's a lot of variety. In an interview Jordan did at Summer Game Fest, the developers did know that it would be extremely difficult to have the highest level of reputation with all gangs at the same time. They also said that if Makes you, sense. for example, want to get all four faction exclusive outfits, you'll have to damage your reputation with one syndicate in order to gain favor with another at one point. So it looks like no matter what you do, balance is always shifting, and that sounds pretty interesting to me. We also learned from I Jordan's guess. interview that each syndicate has a vault with a ton of treasure in it that they won't let you access, no matter how high your reputation. But K being a scoundrel, you're of course free to try and enter anyway to steal the contents. There are multiple keys you need to gather from a syndicate stronghold in order to access it, but that is where having a good reputation can really help. You. While you won't be able to access the vault directly, you are able to walk through the surrounding area without interference if your reputation is high enough. While that definitely makes stealing from the vault a lot easier, you are also able to try it early on without these benefits, so that's a pretty exciting early game challenge. And if you by the way want to play early, totally check our giveaway for the Ultimate Edition in- Please note, Season Pass. Season Pass. This is not- <clears throat> This is not buy our two upcoming story DLCs. It's season pass, which includes what is a season pass? 
you don't know what a season pass is, do a, a good Google search on season pass for games and find out what they are. Again, letting you as the consumer know, this is right on Ubisoft's fucking website, so please don't come back and tell me, this game does not have a season pass. You're lying. I've had so many people tell me that. I want to tell you, if you're going to tell me that again, go fuck off. Because you're the one who's lying. It's right here. Okay. I'm sorry, but I, I get tired of these internet trolls who come by. I, I love the people who kind of come by and have great conversations about their shit. But I am not a... Uh, although I'm opinionated on some things, I'm not an argumentative person. I'm not someone who likes to have an ongoing, running argument with somebody trying to prove my point. In the end, I don't really give a shit. You're allowed to think what you want. Allow me to think what I want. Pisses me off when people don't allow me that right. They want to take away my freedom of thought and speech. Go fuck yourself. But anyways, because I allow them to think whatever they want, no matter how wrong I think it is. Some people won't allow me that right. I I I I don't know, man. Like those people are like they're like the the worst of the worst people because they they literally want to take your rights away, and I don't understand that because it doesn't it doesn't resonate with me. I don't do that. I always say you're welcome to your opinion. Let me be welcome to mine. If you want to join in the discussion, cool. If you want to try to argue to get me to change my opinion, that argument's probably not going to last very long. Because in the end, I'm going to be like, nope, let's just agree to disagree and go our separate ways. I don't care enough to argue this. It doesn't matter to me. And I'm not going to try to change your mind. What I'm letting you do is the things you need to know as a consumer. Things you may not be aware of otherwise. So that you can make a well-informed decision on your precious funds before you spend them. I try to be that guy. I try. But some people just come along and they, they piss me off. They, they really do. And uh, they quickly find themselves getting banned if they're going to continue to be that way. Anyways, what can I say, people? My name is Dread. I'm the happy Canadian guy, eh? I mean, come on. Look at me, eh? I'm happy. <laughs> Would you like me to say about a whole bunch? Because people people from America think it's funny when I say the word about. I don't know why. Uh, uh, by the way, I do not eat poutine. I think it's gross. I don't like it. So there you go. Um, what else can I tell you? Maple syrup and back bacon, though. Those are both good. I don't know if I'd have them together, but, um, my name is Dread. I think Trent's been giving me way too many ideas. Sorry. And, uh, hey, this is Miss Valley Entertainment News. We'll catch you on next time. Thanks for watching.